guys, so let's do a rundown of how to edit one photo really quickly in each section. And then I'm gonna show you how to apply that photo settings to all the photos you have in Lightroom. So let's say you just shot an engagement shoot and you have 60 photos. Uh, what's very unproductive is to edit literally each photo at all in a row. And that's gonna take so much time. So what I do is edit a photo to my liking, or even better, use my presets I developed over the last five years, or even better, use Own Your Look to develop the style quickly. But that's another chat. Um, and then I apply that one setting to all the 60 photos or a thousand photos or whatever it is. And then I'll go through each photo and adjust just the brightness, which is your exposure of each photo. And that allows you to batch edit photos so quickly. And that is what a lot of photographers struggle on. A lot of photographers struggle on editing photos quickly and consistently. So I'm gonna teach you how to edit photos consistently, very quickly. So basically it's like you're editing one photo very quickly, applying to all your photos, and then you're just going through and adjusting the brightness of each photo. And you, I can edit engagement shoots of 100 photos in about 10 minutes. Uh, sometimes even less, sometimes more, it depends how many photos there are. Uh, but I've developed that workflow and system. And you guys won't be that quick at the beginning, but I'm gonna show you my system, so let's get started. I'm gonna edit a full engagement session with you guys, and the same principle can be applied for a wedding or something bigger. But basically, I'm gonna take you through the entire process of what it takes for when I get a, all the raw photos into uh, my, my Lightroom to, to editing it, to adjusting it all. So you guys are gonna see the entire process. So right here, we have an engagement session and there are 65 photos in this engagement session. Now, it wasn't a bright, bright sunny day, so we didn't have a lot of sunlight. So usually my style, I go for a lot of sunlight. So what I like to do first is find a photo that kind of summarizes all the colors of the entire photo shoot. So this photo we're looking at right here has a lot of greens, it has yellows, it has the skin tones, it has the colors of the shirts they're wearing. So we're gonna edit this photo first of each photo in the system, uh, in Lightroom, I mean. Um, so let's open them all up. So I'm gonna show you the natural order as well, because sometimes you might think, Jeremy, it's great you tell me each section of Lightroom, which one do I do first? So I'm gonna show you literally what I do first and in what order. The first thing I always do is lens correction, because lens correction can sometimes change the brightness, which it just did, which is the exposure. Um, and so we're gonna edit that quickly right now. So now that is all done. Now I'm gonna close it. So when I'm done something, I'm gonna close it. Now we're gonna go up to white balance. Uh, sometimes I'm gonna click this little dropper, um, click the white of the photo, see what it does. I don't like it. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna change the temperature a little bit colder. I'm gonna go a little bit warmer again and just kind of go left and right and kind of get a feeling for what white balance I want. I'm gonna do the same thing for the tint. And I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta. So now I'm going to like 32, 27. Now I'm gonna edit the exposure, get it properly exposed. Great. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, just like 10 points, not that much. I'm not adding a lot to the first section because I'm gonna be doing so much more in-depth work in the S-curve. So I don't do a lot of dramatic um, changes on my highlights and shadows. The highlights I usually bring down quite a bit, usually to negative 70. Shadows, I usually always bring up to like 25. Whites, I always bring up around like 15. And blacks, I always bring down about negative 15. That's usually how my style goes. Now, your style might be a little bit different. Figure out your flow, but that's usually literally what I do every single time to all my photos because now I have a consistent style and a consistent look. Clarity, I don't touch. Remember, if you do clarity, it's gonna like make it more bold and punchy and contrasty. D haze, I don't touch. Remember that adds more details into your photo. Vibrance, I'm gonna up a tad. And I'm actually going to desaturate this image. We're editing to my style here. So you guys are gonna see exactly how I get to my signature look. I, des I desaturate the image because I'll desaturate all the colors in this photo. And then I'll pick specific colors I wanna bring up or down. Now we're in the S curve. So remember, I'm gonna be using the advanced S curve. First, we're changing the brightness of just the, the whites and blacks. So that'd be your shadows, highlights, blacks, and whites. 
So if I click the midtones, I can, uh, I'm gonna bring up the midtones. Midtones usually sit on their skin. So usually like that's what you're changing. Um, I'm actually gonna bring the blacks darker. So remember, this is like the very darkest point. So you can see just kind of like his, his hair and the darkest part of the trees are getting more black. I like that. So I'm gonna put it up. And you can do the opposite. You can make that part faded. So now you can see the exact same region is becoming faded. So you can kind of choose which part you want to become faded. So we're gonna to go to the right a tad. Now let's go with kind of the more. So now we have a really cool punchy look without it being too dramatic. So here's no S curve added. It's very flat with S curve added. Now you can see there's a lot more, a way better contrast to this photo. It looks so good compared to what it was before. Now I'm gonna to go to my blue. Now there's already a lot of warmth in this photo. So if I add blue into the photo, Sure, that looks good, but I'm gonna take blue out of the photo and make it even more warm. See, I love that look. And now I feel like reds in the highlights would look awesome. So I'm gonna put a bunch of dots so we don't affect the shadows. And then I'm gonna add some red, a little bit of red into the highlights. So now here's without the S curves added, here's width. We just added so much personality to this photo. And now I'm gonna leave it. You can see that I only did three things to the S curve. Remember, I changed the black and white part of the S curve, I changed the red channel, and I changed the blue channel. And not even by much, it's usually just little changes. Less is more. Now we're gonna go down to HSL. What I always like to do is first go to the skin tones. I desaturate it all the way first, and then I keep adding more until I like it. It's right about there. Um, so I added plus seven in the oranges and plus se minus 17 in the red. And then I'm gonna go, go to luminance and do the same thing. I'm gonna click their skin, bring it down all the way and then keep going brighter and brighter and brighter until I like it. Usually I like to bring it up quite a bit. Um, so it almost looks like their skin's glowing. I think that's a very awesome look for their skin. And then I'll do the same thing for the saturation of and the luminance of the green. So I don't like how, how much green is in this photo. You can see if I take the greens totally out, now it looks totally totally different. But I think there's too much green in this scene. So I'm gonna pull the saturation of the green a tad. And then I'm gonna change the brightness of the green, which is luminance. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna brighten up the greens too. So now here's a before, all settings off. That's exactly how it came in raw. Now here's with all the settings on. You can see it's more whimsical and it has a really cool look to it. And definitely uh, not boring anymore. Now highlights, I like to add in a little bit of warmth overall in the highlights, but not much. Sometimes I don't even add this in. If I did a good job on my S curve, I won't even touch split toning. Now, if you do a good job on your split toning, sometimes you don't have to touch your S curve. So S curve in the red, green, blue channels and split toning can do similar things. It's just what is easier. So always, uh, always try one or the other. Sometimes you can do both if you want to get really creative, but just kind of learn that balance. So I'm just going to add a little bit of warmth. I always do a lot of masking. So you can see if you hold alt, reminder, alt, and the more you turn to the right, the more, the less you will sharpen. So now whatever is white, that's what you're gonna add sharpening to. And then I'm gonna increase my sharpening. Looks great. Increase the radius, increase the detail. Won't do any noise reduction because we're outside and we don't have any of that. Um, I won't click any of that. Um, looks good. Cool guys. So. We just edited a perfect photo. Um, all these settings, the S curve, my HSL, uh, my split toning, uh, my, my red channels, blue channels, and RGB, uh, my S curves and all my tones. The goal to making all your photos looking the same is using these exact settings on all your photos. Let me show you how. So this is how you do it. You're gonna see all these photos on the bottom and you just edited this one right here. So what you're gonna do is click this one. You're gonna to scroll to the right. You're gonna hold shift and then you're gonna click the last one. What that's gonna do is highlight all these photos. Now, you're gonna see this button right here called sync. Click, sync, check all. So what you're about to do is synchronize that first photo with the rest of the photos you just, uh, you just clicked. Now, undo exposure. The reason we do that is because we're gonna sync all the settings, 
but every photo you took in your photo shoot might have a different exposure. So we're going to let that be the same because probably if you're a good photographer, you got the exposure right in camera, so it will already be perfect. So now this photo has these settings. If I go to the right, this photo has the exact same settings. If I go to the right, this photo has the exact same settings. And now all these photos to the right have the exact same settings. The only setting that's not the same is the exposure. The exposure is the same it came in importing. So now what I do, now because of the photos to the left, since I added in the middle, these ones don't have the same settings. See, these are still raw. So let's go to my OG photo. OG, what, what? Um, we're gonna click the first one. So whatever the first photo you click, that's gonna be the main pillar photo. You go to the left, hold shift, and then while you're holding shift, click the last photo. You're gonna select all of these, and then click sync, and then click all except for exposure. So it's gonna, all these settings that we've learned so far is gonna be applied to the rest of the photos. And now all of them are gonna change. You can see them changing below. So now if we click on the very first one of the shoot, this is how I edit a bunch of, oh, I was, wanted to fix. So now I hover my mouse over exposure and on my keyboard, if I click up, down and up, I don't know if you can see this. If I click down and up while my mouse is hovering exposure, you can see it makes slight changes. Now this is how I edit weddings quickly in engagement sessions. So I'll go to the first one, I'll edit the exposure till I like it. I'll go to the next one, edit the exposure down a tad until I like it. Go to the next one, oh, it's overexposed. Turn the exposure down a tad. Go to the next one, oh, I'll bring the exposure down a tad. Go to the next one, oh, I'll bring the exposure down a tad. Go to the next one. So you can see now this is my process. So I literally go at it this speed. Next, next, next. Mm, needs to come down a tad, next. Next, needs to come down a lot, next. Looks good, looks good. Needs to come down a tad, looks good. So now you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When I do photo shoots, I shoot in manual, which means all the photos I take are taken in the same settings. So unless the, the sun changes dramatically and I change settings, then usually these six photos will look the same because the lighting system is the same. So. If I click all these photos and you see the sync button, if I click this little tab and now it says auto sync. So the photo I'm editing, the first one I click, I move the exposure up to plus minus 16. It's gonna make the rest of the photos automatically be minus 16 too. Only the ones you select after the first one. So now when I go to the right, they're all gonna be the same exposure. So now I just edited like seven photos at the same time and now I don't have to change anything. So if you have like an entire ceremony of 200 photos that you shot in the same settings, you can edit photos so quickly. So we're gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. Now they're throwing leaves. Now, now these are the original photos that we edited. Um, looks good. Bring down the exposure. So I'm tapping down, 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 down to bring down the exposure. So this is a quicker way instead of like using your mouse every time. Like that would, ooh, like even just doing that once because I edit, I edit thousands of photos every summer. Uh, that would drive me nuts. I'll bring down the exposure, bring down the exposure. Another good way is say, this one's too bright, so I'm gonna bring down the exposure. Now that exposure is good. Now I'm gonna to click to the right. Now, if you want, you see this previous button? If you click previous, it'll apply the exact same settings of the photo you just were editing. So now you go from that one to that one. Looks good. And now, so eventually it'll get quicker. This is kind of a quick crash course, a beginner version of how to edit photos quickly, batch editing, this is how you do it. I'm gonna be making a full course on how to do it quickly because that is a huge asset when it comes to being a photographer that shoots anything in bulk or a lot of photos when it comes to big family shoots or weddings. Um, now, I'm gonna finish this up, but here's another quick tip because I didn't talk about these things yet. Here's how you crop photos, this little scale thing to the right, you click it, you'll see that the grid pops up. Now, if you click, you see if you hover over the top right and you slowly start moving it, you can scale the photo left and right uh, to level it properly because that photo was not level. Now you're a good photographer, so you don't have crooked horizons because no photographer ever does that. <laughs> but yeah, so now you can go through and just edit 
Now I'll finish this entire engagement shoot so you can see literally how quick it was. I'd be even quicker if I wasn't explaining what I was doing. Um, right now these photos, we lost the sunlight so I'm gonna add more saturation. So you can see how during a photo shoot lighting situations can change a tad. Either the sun goes down or now you're in an indoor location, outdoor location. So you might have to change a part, like a, a section of your photos. You're gonna have to change the, the edit a tad, but it's still keeping the inherent colors of the luminance you changed and the saturation of the skin tones, but you just might change the white balance, but it's still keeping the other settings of the rest of the photos. That's the key to having a consistent style. That's the key to having a consistent brand and a consistent look to your photography as an artist. So right now uh, this photo doesn't have enough saturation in it because I pull it down. So I'm just gonna bring up the overall saturation until I like it, which is like negative 30. And that's because the sun went down and we lost a lot of light. So it looked more dull and flat. So that's why I just did that. So I decided the rest of the photos with more saturation. Bam, we just did in 17 minutes, we just added 65 photos consistently with a signature look, every setting in Lightroom. There's no excuses for being a slow photographer. I'm sorry guys, like <laughs> I know you're just learning right now, but when it comes to somebody photographers that take nine months to get back their photos, like you need to become a good photographer that can come quick, but take your time on the learning process. But then every time you have a photo shoot, make it kind of a race of like, how fast can I, quickly edit all these photos without sacrificing like quality, consistency, um, take your time learning it, but then eventually start to be able to do it quickly because there's nothing worse than being a slow photographer. In today's age, you need to be quick on your feet. You have to be able to process things quickly. Sometimes I get these clients, uh, their, their images the same night after engagement shoot, sometimes a week after, depends uh, what's happening in my business. But that's pretty much bulk editing. And I think, that's it for this section. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, next, we'll talk about some simple tools up here. And then we're almost done the course. I hope you guys have learned a lot so far.